Good to see you. Good to see you, Papa. Thank you for having me. Everybody, good to see you as well. You know, son, um, in Psalm 119, it depicts David operating in a lot of realms of the Holy Spirit because David is showing you how he's keeping his heart from evil. Mm, wow. How he's keeping his soul from iniquity. This is one thing that David is showing you how to perfect this, not letting your internal thinking be defiled or devilish. Mm. There are different streams of devilish thinking. Doubt is devilish thinking. Worry is devilish thinking. Weariness is devilish thinking. Lust is devilish thinking. Competition is devilish thinking. Um, anxiety is devilish thinking. Mm -hmm. There are different departments of a quality wow. where you can activate a fallen angel to steward your own brain. Wow. So wow. that fallen angel is stewarding the brain. So your brain is being uh, chaperoned by demonic power. Wow. wow. All right. Uh, there was something that Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 6. He said that uh, we put on the whole armor of God. And if you notice what firstly he began to emphasize the most, the helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. A helmet is something that they use in football and uh, sports per mm -hmm. se to guard your brain from any damage upon impact. Mm -hmm. Which shows that there is a time in life where you will confront the impact of things. Wow. And the impact, if you don't have on the helmet of salvation, it will touch your brain. Wow. Now, the spiritual brain is not the physical brain. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this right here is your physical brain. Mm -hmm. But your brain is within this physical brain. So your physical brain is a shell. Mm -hmm. wow. But your actual brain is in heaven or hell. Whoa. You see? Wow. So um, your physical body is not the body that you're operating out of. Or, or you're operating from is the body that you're operating out of. Mm -hmm. So your physical body does things that the inward man, that inward body is doing. That's why Jesus said, whatever I see my father do, that do I do. So where's the father? We don't see the father according to a natural of what Jesus is saying. Uh, who, so who is he viewing? He's talking about he's living in the spiritual world, which is heaven. So he's looking at the father in heaven. And this what was governing his physical body. Wow. It was being ruled by his spiritual body. Mm -hmm. So you have a physical brain. That's not where the helmet of salvation comes on. You see, we can put on a physical helmet. That's not the physical. That's not the helmet that uh, Apostle Paul was talking about. He was talking about a helmet that's within you. Mm -hmm. So think about how do you put on a helmet inside of you? Wow. You can't use it with natural hands. Mm -hmm. You could fasten a helmet on a bicycle with physical hands. Mm -hmm. You can't fasten this helmet with physical hands. David said in the book of Psalms, it is the Lord that traineth my hands to war. Mm -hmm. Wow. He traineth my fingers. So he was dealing with the hands. All right. How are these hands trained to war? So it shows you that even your spirit hands is not like your physical hands. Mm -hmm. Because your spiritual hands, how do you war? You war with uh, you, the words that you speak. You war with the actions you choose in life because your decisions prove that you have decided a master over yourself, mm -hmm. whether God or Satan. Mm -hmm. you, you, you are warring when you're sowing. You're warring when you're forgiving people. You're warring when you're praising God. Because Joshua used praise as a weapon of war to get the walls of Jericho down. Wow. Wow. I want you to think about this. Is the helmet of salvation truly on you at all times? And when have you taken it off? Because wow. when you take off the helmet of salvation, you're not looking at life through the Holy Spirit's teaching and the Holy Spirit's 
presence and wisdom. You're looking at life through the demonic, the dark side. If someone takes off the helmet of salvation, this literally means that I am no longer choosing to be delivered from darkness. I realign myself with darkness. And darkness could, could penetrate my meditation, my desire, my appetite, and where I am. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 14, it says, As you rejoice in the day of prosperity, rejoice also in the day of adversity. Mm -hmm. Understanding that the Lord has appointed one over the other. Mm -hmm. Which means that God gives you good times of success and things going right for you. But there's also a time to fight. Mm -hmm. It's a time of battle. If you are only on point when times are good, you're really not on point at all. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because it is the points where there is warfare, there is issues, where your true heart is made manifest. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. The days of prosperity are days that are fun. Days that are enjoyable, days that are easy, mm -hmm. days of good news. The day of adversity are days of not good news. You're not having your way. You're not feeling the, the, the atmosphere charged with joy. Mm -hmm. So in life, what has started to happen with many people is that you can live life and not really pit on the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. wow. And God will let you go through something to see that you're still naked. If something could penetrate your mind, you know that you don't got on the helmet. Because mm -hmm. the helmet will block it from penetrating your spiritual mind. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Wow. So if the mind gets penetrated, you know I don't have on the helmet. This is why it's so important that the Father picks a path for every single person. Because you need to know where you're undressed. Mm. Whoa. God will address where you're undressed. Mm. What you think, sir? Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful how you say God is going to uh, address what's on undressed on you. Mm -hmm. Meaning that correction is going to come mm -hmm. where God is mm -hmm. seeing that you're not uh, ready or prepared for war. Mm -hmm. God is going to bring to your attention the areas that needs to be worked on. Mm -hmm. And in that time of adversity is when you really know who you are. Because you, if you experience only the good side of God, then you think, oh, everything's good. That's right. But when you experience the instruction, the correction side of God, how are you going to react? Are you going to have the same happiness, the same energy, the same attitude to do things for God? That's where your heart really shows in times of adversity. Say that again. That's where your heart really shows in, when? Time, in times of adversity. So the heart is not really showing in times of prosperity. No. It could be deceitful. Be, be, because um, it could be deceitful, what you're about to say. <laughs> and then just then. Moses brought them out <clears throat> with their silver and gold, and nobody argued against Moses. Mm -hmm. So the good times wasn't a re uh, revealing of the heart. Mm -hmm. The good times was not a revealing of the heart, because he brought those same people out with their silver and gold. Mm -hmm. The prosperity was not an indicator of their heart. It wasn't a magnifier of their heart. Their heart was not exploding in visibility in the times of prosperity. Mm -hmm. Times of adversity are divine. You see if you really believe God or you lied. Wow. Wow. If God tells somebody, I want you to leave your uncle, they leave their uncle, they're happy, they're excited. It's only when times go bad that you're going to see if you really left your uncle. Whoa. Mm. Wow. You see? <laughs> yes. Because weak times exposes to you if you're weak. Mm. Wow. Wow. Whoa. You can have false strength because the times are strong. Mm. You, do you know that you could be in a strong time in this life? That means that the you, 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 you feel the anointing strong. You feel God's information strong. You feel everything strong. 
is the time where that information is weak. Let me give you a secret that you never heard before. When Elijah heard Jezebel say, I'm going to take your head off, the information that God taught Elijah was weak. Wow. And he was in the glory. Mm -hmm. wow. The information was weak. Wow. So it wasn't heavy, intense, penetrating, effective. It was weak. Mm -hmm. So when he's in that weak place, now Elijah sees his own weakness. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. He then says, I want to die. Wow. How come you didn't want to die when the abundance of rain came? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Think about that, son. Wow, that's deep. Wow. How come he didn't pray to die mm -hmm. when the fire did come down from heaven? Wow. Why didn't, just think about this. Let's just go deep on this. Mm -hmm. Why wasn't that an option when he killed the prophets of Baal and they actually died? Wow. And God backed them up and God answered his prayer for the abundance of rain. And God showed up like a cloud in the size of a man's hand and his servants saw the miracles. And why didn't he pray to die when the boy raised from the dead, the woman at Zarephath? Why didn't he pray to die when the woman got her abundance unlocked through her seed? Why didn't he pray to die in those times? Wow. Those times were strong times. Wow. Everybody has a weak time scheduled during the existence of your days on earth. And in those weak times is where you learn the most. Mm -hmm. The reason why you learn the most is because you are in a place where either you're going to discover that the devil is still your Lord or you're going to discover the depths of Jesus who is the Lord. Wow. Wow. You're going to experience the depths of Satan or the depths of Jesus. But is the time of adversity that you see yourself Son, I've never said this before, but that woman in the garden was in a time of adversity. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. She was in a time of adversity and she was not willing to combat the weak time. Mm. She succumbed to the weak time. Wow. Whoa. She succumbed to the weak time. She submitted to the weak time. See, in the weak time, you can't just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You got to fight mm -hmm. the good fight of faith. You got to do something and result. Mm -hmm. That woman in the garden, she lied down and let Satan rape her. Wow. Whoa. Wow. You see? Wow. Yeah. Wow. She was unwilling <clears throat> to give her side of her realm in her dimension of her kingdom she accepted the realm and let that be the finale of her decision wow wow in weak times in times of adversity you can lie down and satan will keep on imparting the lie down whoa wow wow see uh, son i want you to always remember this People that lose spiritual battles didn't show up to the battle as spirit. Whoa. Whoa. They showed up to the battle as flesh. Oh, wow. 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 So when they show up to the battle, they have no intent to challenge the battle. Mm -hmm. They submit to the battle. They immerse themselves. They conform to that battle. Wow. They peacefully surrender. Surrender to the battle. To the battle. Wow. Say that again, son. They peacefully surrender, surrender to the battle. And see, this peacefully is not the P-E-A-C-E. -E, it's the P-I-E-C-E. -E. Mm. Pieces. Pieces. Wow. You see? Because mm. they're broken. Mm -hmm. You can't be wholesome mm -hmm. 
Cause there's peace, P E A C E, peace, and then there's pieces. Wow. So they're peacefully. They're full of pieces. Like you know how a puzzle got pieces. Mm -hmm. They're full of pieces, and they surrender to the battle. Wow. Shattered. Wow. <laughs> wow. This some this is some powerful stuff. Wow. If you go throughout the rest of your days on earth just submitting to things that come your way, okay, I'm thinking this thought, okay, I'm just going to submit to it. Mm -hmm. Even a bitter person, they submit to the bitterness. Mm -hmm. yeah. They submit to it. Wow. They submit to it. Do you know, son, do you know it's highly ludicrous that you could come into this earth and be mad at another race? Mm. And you never had an encounter with that race yet? Wow. But you just heard people tell you about that race and say, this this type of people, they do this to us. They did this to us. And now you're angry. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. And you go ask certain people, what have, what have what's your encounter? What have you? Nothing. But they did it to the people before me. <laughs> <laughs> That's just crazy. It, 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 son, it's beyond crazy, you know? <laughs> But think about that. Why do people do that? They have no helmet of salvation. So what comes to them is simply what they receive. Mm. They don't reject it and say, I'm not going to let myself get defiled. Mm. Psalm 119 verse 1. Blessed is the undefiled in the way. Mm. <laughs> wow. Blessed is the undefiled in the way. Mm. Wow. Now, so when we deal with undefiled... Defiled is a word that means it makes you unclean, it makes you dirty, it makes you filthy, it makes your mind operate lower than the image of God. How God intended for your brain to evaluate things, it is not evaluating things like that. So when the words say blessed is the undefiled in a way, let's look at this blessed. Mean empowered by the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. are people that are not letting the mindset of Satan enter them. The word is saying, blessed are they that refuse to let Satan's words live on the inside of them. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. You see? So, would you say that if you permit a thought to live inside of you for days, do you believe that a person becomes defiled? Yes. Yes. Why? Because if you let that, if it's a thought that is not from God and you let it sit there, then you conforming your heart to the thought. Now you putting yourself mm -hmm. in that thought to carry out what that thought is telling you to do. And once you uh, purpose in your heart to do something, you become on the file. There's nothing ca that can stop you. Mm. To carry out what you, what that thought already set mm -hmm. in you to do. Mm -hmm. This helmet of salvation is so major. The helmet of salvation is not a physical helmet that you put on. It is something that you wear on the inside of you that blocks off everything that goes against the deliverance power of Jesus. Mm. So the minute that you're not dwelling on Jesus' deliverance power, you're not wearing the helmet. So there is an energy that God has reserved, a power that he has reserved for people that dwell on his deliverance. Wow, wow, wow. And something very powerful you said on that, um, the, uh, the teaching you did earlier about the man of God. Mm -hmm. He said that there shouldn't be a, a time where a man cannot meditate. Oh. It has to be a must, a meditation would you picture God? Would you picture Jesus? Wow. Would you picture the Holy Ghost? You have to meditate. That's part of the helmet. When you meditate in the Holy Spirit and in Jesus. Son, the biggest, <clears throat> the, that's so good. The biggest part of meditation is pictures and reels. Mm, wow. You know, on Facebook, we have reels. On Instagram, we have reels, right? On different social media, we have something called Reels where people do videos. Watch this. Your imagination 
it, it's two major departments. It's pictures and reels. Videos. That's what reels are. Videos and pictures. Snapshots. How many times is the pictures in your mind and the videos, the reels in your mind about Jesus walking up to the girl in Telekumai and she comes out of her death sentence. Her spirit re-enters her body. And now Jesus says, go and feed this girl because she's hungry. And Jesus just raised the girl from the dead that was pronounced dead. How many times is the visual that this woman went to all the doctors? She had an incurable disease. An incurable disease. Wow. Which means that medication cannot fight this. It remains in the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Whoa. But she goes and she worships Jesus' presence. That's all she did. You don't even got to say that Jesus was in a physical form because she never touched his body. Whoa. Mm -hmm. wow. She touched the garment, which is a thing. Well, think about it. You never touched the Bible? Well, that is an object of Jesus' presence. Whoa. Wow. So the minute that you're touching the Bible, you're touching the hymn. Mm -hmm. As soon as you lift your hands, the Bible said lift your hands. So as soon as you lift your hands, you're touching his hymn. As soon as you open up your mouth to praise him, you're touching the hem. Wow. So there's many ways to touch the hem of Jesus' garment, but you can't touch the hem if you don't go where she went. She didn't go physically before she went me mentally. Wow. 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 Some of you are going to get healed at this conference, right? Yes. Wow. You're going to get healed at this conference physically, but I'm training you how to get into the healing before you enter that building because your mind is going to be steadfast on the helmet of salvation, the deliverance power of the Lord. Wow. And see, some of you are, you don't recognize it. Uh, that impartations happen differently. They happen differently. So if I schedule an impartation to be in person, the in person is the only way for you to get it. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. You see? Wow. So when 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 whenever you get into the meditation realm, now you can live out places that you've been promised by God. Those places are in your meditation realm. If you don't step into your meditation realm, you can't get there. The Holy Spirit is a spirit. Therefore, there is an invisible communication system that you got to grow into. Mm -hmm. Your meditation is an invisible con uh, conversation, a uh, 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 communication system that nobody can see but you. Mm -hmm. Wow. You will be shocked how many times you're around somebody you think that they like you and they hate you. They say, oh, the person think they are that. And you're like, you don't know that. Mm -hmm. I'm saying in life, you don't know people's meditation realm. Wow. Tupac sat next to Suge Knight. <laughs> <laughs> Suge Knight didn't like Tupac like that. Suge Knight just liked the Tupac money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He knew that when Tupac came out with that glistening head, that there was this from, from Californians <laughs> that felt great. Suge Knight didn't have love for Tupac. Wow. In life, many people get with people that you don't know their meditation state about you. The best thing that you could do for uh, anybody, if you ever, um, those of you are that's not familiar with my ministry, you're probably watching me for the first time. If you in relationship with somebody, there's several things that you need to see. You need to see how they deal with their anger, their stress, their distractions, how they deal with their insecurities, how they deal with their, um, their mistakes. You need to look at the departments that are a part of the adversity of a person, not the prosperity of a person. Mm, wow. A person has two parts to them. Mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 
they have the prosperity part of them and they have the uh, adversity part of them. Wow. Which I should say the poverty part of them. Mm. Wow. Because this is where they're lacking <clears throat> God's traits. Mm. Wow. Wow. So when somebody is angry, you will know whether or not they, they work through prosperity, meaning good success with God, the proper meditation, or poverty, which is meditation with Satan, where Satan gives you the finale of your response. Wow. Wow. Everybody got two parts in them, the, the prosperity them, the adversity them, which is the poverty them. Mm -hmm. And the poverty them, it takes no effort to walk there. It takes effort to walk in the prosperity of yourself. You notice it didn't say resist God, it said resist the devil. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I'm exerting energy in the direction of the devil. Mm. Wow. Now, when you're with the devil, you have to exert no energy. That normality, that first nature is already scripted by you. Mm -hmm. Is already scripted in you. Wow. So you don't have to learn how to tell a lie. You ponder the lie. I'm going to escape the consequence. Fine, I'll lie. Mm -hmm. You know how many times people had a big old... Uh, rotisserie chicken in their chest and the cops stopped them and said you got rotisserie I ain't got a rotisserie chicken <laughs> <laughs> and the, the the cop pulled up their shirt the rotisserie chicken jumped to their <laughs> nose bust them in the toe <laughs> you know the devil be uh, scheduling when you hit your toe on something Oh, <laughs> your whole life stopped Ooh. well think about it you will never ever see the poverty side of yourself until there's a challenge, until there's friction, until there is warfare. Peter never denied Jesus when Jesus was doing the miracles. Mm -hmm. If you told if you told him I saw you around Jesus, he's like, Yeah, dog, that's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as as Jesus is in the adversity. Mm -hmm. wow. Peter says, I don't know this man. Wow. Wow. Think about it. The prosperity of Jesus brought no denial. Mm -hmm. The adversity of Jesus brought many denial. The prosperity was keeping Peter in an option of loyalty. Mm -hmm. The adversity was keeping Peter in the option of denial. Wow. Wow. So was Peter wearing a helmet of salvation? No. Wow. Because the only way you could see if the helmet is there is not in prosperity. In adversity. Wow. 